Here's another example where we will do square root to both sides, really called the square root property. This property that if you have an equation, you can do square root to both sides and maintain your equality. And of course, we know that we need to indicate that you could have a positive or a negative solution. And it worked pretty well with that x squared equals 9. And it can work with really any equation where we have a factor that is squared. So it's it's increased in complexity beyond just x squared, but it's still our squared section is isolated. I have everything on the left side is contained in parentheses. This entire expression is to the second power, and the 16 is over on the other side. So my squared section is isolated. I can do square root to both sides. It is a good idea to do that. Square root. And the other side, it's going to be in green this time, this plus or minus symbol. I don't really know if there's a, a special name for that symbol. This plus or minus is what I always hear. So right side, square root of 16 is 4, but we've got this could be positive 4, could be negative 4. Left side is where we have that squared section. That's where we get the cancel that we're after. Squ square root and the square cancel. We're left with 2x plus 5 equals positive or negative 4. Now we know that that, as I just said, positive or negative 4, but how do we work with it in this equation? And to be honest with you, as soon as I get to this linear equation, so I have the x by its, not by itself, but x with no exponent, x to the first power, no x squared, and I need to use this positive or negative symbol, I stop and I say, okay, I'm splitting it up into the two equations. 2x plus 5 equals 4, and the other equation is going to be 2x plus 5 equals negative 4. Two different equations, that's where I'm going to get my two different solutions, and I'm back to solving linear equations. I'm working to get the x isolated. On the left side, we've got 2x, and it equals negative 1, and get rid of that coefficient, divide by 2, both sides. x equals negative 1 half. It's our first solution. The other linear equation, minus 5, minus 5, cancel that 5 off the left side. 2x equals ooh, negative 9. And then we'll divide by 2 x equals negative 9 over 2. There are our two solutions, and plugged in place of x, it would make our equation true. We'll skip over that, but I want to show you something about, if you had thoughts about a shortcut with solving that equation, 2x plus 5 equals positive or negative 4. Okay, understand that what... I'm about to show is a bad thing to do. If I don't split it up into two equations and try to just keep going as is, I would take away 5 on both sides, cancel. If I was really trying to do this, I'd bring down a 2x. I don't know what I would try to do there. I guess I would see that that's like a positive or negative 1 somehow. And then I would divide by 2. And you could see that I somehow managed to hit one of them. I got that x equals negative one-half, I end up here with a positive or negative one-half, and positive one-half absolutely will not work up here, and I never found this other one that x equals negative nine over two, so it's bad. No shortcut. What I like to do is once I get here, get to that linear equation, just split it up into two equations and go from there. x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 25. You might think about, well, let's just bring that 25 over to the left side, set it equal to 0, solve by factoring. Excellent. Definitely a great way to go. But we're going to go a different route with this just for sake of an example. These are all going to be productive examples, I hope. x squared plus 6x plus 9. I'm going to factor that as is because it's popped out as a perfect square, actually. When I factor this... How does it pop out as a perfect square? Well, you have to sort of have an eye for that. At some point early on when you learn about factoring, someone has to say, here's a special 
trinomial. That is a perfect square. And the way that you can spot it is the first clue is that your third term, it is a perfect square. So that was my first tip off. I see a positive 9 and I say, hey, that's a positive 3 times positive 3. Could be negative 3 times negative 3, but definitely I can get there from something times itself. And I know about this type of trinomial when it's factored that the numbers I have in parentheses that multiply together equal po this third number, a positive 9, add it together, they'll equal this middle coefficient, positive 6. So then I think again about it, positive 3 with positive 3. Those two added together equals 6. So when you see this sort of a trinomial and you focus on those attributes, it, it comes, comes in handy to solve by doing square roots. And it comes in handy just for being smooth in, in overall quadratics. So if I just look at how it's factored, I'll see that x plus 3 times x plus 3. If you spotted it as a perfect square, you might say right away, okay, I know that that's an x plus 3 twice. I'm just going to go right there. Make sure we're still seeing that this is an equation. And what's neat about this being a perfect square is now I have an equation that is similar to the example we just did where I have my squared section isolated and now I can do square roots to both sides. And that's going to take the exponent of 2 out of the... I didn't forget. It's, 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 it's been burned into my mind. Always do that add or subtract. See, I, I lost my tra train of thought, but something inside of me still made me write that. It's, a lot, it's years of training. Okay, x plus 3 equals positive or negative 5. I'm going to split this up right now. x plus 3 equals positive 5. x plus 3 equals negative 5. And let's solve these. I'll take the opportunity to uh, apologize for just being so informal with these particular videos but I'm going to try to knock out everything about solving quadrat... I can't do that, everything. How about a lot? All the good stuff, the real important stuff, we're going to knock it all out in one sitting. So that we're in the middle of it, we're going to do it. And I might get a little more loose, but that happens. Okay, there are the two solutions. x equals 2, x equals negative 8. And once we had our square root of 25 turns into a positive or negative 5, right away I went for the two different equations. x plus 3 equals 5, solve that, take away 3 both sides. x equals 2, those guys canceled. This other equation, x plus 3 equals the negative 5, I had to take away 3 again actually, cancel, and x equals negative 8, and those are our two solutions.